today I'm reviewing The Only One Left by Riley Sager and this will be a spoiler free review. This is his seventh thriller and I've read all seven of them. First I'm going to talk about what worked for me, then I'll talk about what didn't work for me, and then I'll give my rating as well as where I would rank this among all his other books. Our main character in this one is a caretaker who goes to take care of this elderly woman who is infamous for killing everybody in her family and she takes care of this woman in this house on this cliffside in Maine called Hope's End. Here's what worked for me. The first thing that worked for me is the atmosphere that Sager creates in terms of this impending doom. Basically the whole book we know inevitably that something's gonna go down on this cliffside because he's constantly mentioning it, talking about how it's old, how it's eroding, and how the house is really close to the cliff's edge. So not only do we have what Sager's known for of building atmosphere and his ominous settings, but the fact that we're on the edge of this cliff basically the whole book and mentioning it all the time really helped with giving that sense of foreboding the whole reading experience. The next thing that worked for me was the reveals that were consistently spursed throughout the book in order to keep me interested. The reveals had various levels of shock value, some bigger than the other, but they really contributed to the pacing of this book, keeping me engaged and invested. This is paired with me as the reader constantly being able to formulate theories about what's going on and knowing that some of them are going to be right, some of them are going to be wrong, mostly wrong. So the fact that the reveals kept me engaged and also kept me formulating, okay, what's actually happening? As the reader, it added to my level of engagement and enjoyment that I was constantly writing down my theories so I could see later if I was right or not. And the situations and scenarios that are involved here, as well as the number of characters, are so intertwined and complex that it's not just one or two options. There's always several different ways that things could go in this book. Next we have the classic Sager double twist that he does. He does it again here where we have our main twist. We think that's it and then here we go with the actual double twist. So even if you saw one coming you probably didn't see the other coming and it gets me every time even though I know to expect it. It just works. His double twists really do work. I did the audiobook for this one and it was a good audiobook. The narrator was definitely improved from the house across the lake but definitely when we got those big moments and the big classic double twist I had to pause and process like am I hearing this right? Did he really get me with this? And yes he did again get me with the double twist. And the final thing that worked for me is an ending that gives me closure with the characters since we did just go through all of these emotions ups and downs with our main characters. I really felt closure with both of our main characters Lenora and Kit in terms of there was no ambiguity we knew where these characters stood by the end and it made me tear up even. So I thought that the way that he brought the book to an end and gave us a little bit of reward for sitting through this whole process with these characters was done well. That was what worked for me about this book, now moving into what didn't work for me. We had our formulaic plot beats where I felt like I always knew where I was in the story and what's coming next in terms of he always hits the same beats and pacing. And it definitely felt familiar and like, oh, I've read this before with the same interactions or the same emotional beats or same backstory, but now we just have a different setting or different stakes. Going off of that, we had our usual male side character that's there to either help our main character or scare our main character or have a hint of doubt that he's the villain and we're not sure if he's a red herring or if he's actually the villain. Like clockwork, he's there in this book, like in all of Sager's other books. I would also say the middle dragged a little bit where we were kind of like, okay, let's keep it moving. Let's get to another reveal. We don't need all these conversations with random side characters that are probably not going to be the villain. And extending off of that, this book kind of fell into the trap of let's just wait until the victim is ready to reveal everything which I think a lot of thrillers fall into that trap where we're just adding suspenseful events for fun until we get to the 75% mark and the victim finally decides to tell everybody what's going on when they could have just told them earlier. So it definitely fell into that trap a little bit. And also connecting back to my what worked for me about Sager's double twist, this book almost had too many twists. At some point I was definitely thinking, are there too many twists in this book? and we're getting a little bit too outlandish here. Maybe dial it back a bit. That being said, despite there being a little bit too many twists and a little bit outlandish, unrealistic, convenient things happening, or things put in just to get another shocking gasp out of the reader, I still felt closure from our main character and felt satisfied with where we left the characters. The ending made me cry and it definitely reminded me why I continue to read Sager's books every year on release date. It's an annual tradition and it's fun and I continue to really enjoy Sager's work. That's what worked and didn't work for me and I'm giving this book a five star. 
ultimately what worked for me really outweighed what didn't work for me and I had a lot of fun with this one. I would recommend it. This one was particularly fun trying to figure out what's actually going on and try to see if you can get it right before the main character gets it right. And in terms of my rankings for Sager's books, this is my fourth favorite book out of seven. My rankings from favorite to least favorite are Lock Every Door, Home Before Dark, The Last Time I Lied, The Only Ones Left, Survive the Night, The House Across the Lake, and Final Girls. Tell me in the comments your thoughts on this book and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!